Okay. Uh, thank you very much <laughs> for the technical support. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, as announced, this is going to be in English because we have very important guests from uh, Brno and uh, we will have a, a lecture on, an, on a park which I'm not going to introduce. What I'm, my role is, I'm Lili Lichka, I'm the, um, uh, one of the founders of this lecture series. And uh, we intend to have uh, this time a series of three parks which are introduced and they are ab about 100 years apart. One is from 1913 probably, we will hear about that date later. Uh, one is from, the from 1980 more or less and one is from 2023. So we would like to look in, in this series into the ideas behind the design of the parks. And we start with a, one of, a, one of the uh, proponents of a social green. And um, I will hand over to moderate the evening to Ulrike Krippner, which I'm happy to introduce. She is um, the scientific head of the Archive of Austrian Landscape Architecture at the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences, BOKU, in Wien, Vienna. And we will collaborate uh, on, uh, and we collaborate on the history, contemporary history of landscape architecture there. And may I ask you to introduce our guests? Thank you for coming. And we will have uh, the time for discussion later on. Good evening and a warm welcome uh, to the audience here and remote on their devices, and especially warm welcome to our guests from Bruno. Um, uh, public parks are essential parts of our cities, and this concept uh, dates back to late 18th century, when Christian Kai Lorenz Hirschfeld was one of the first to promote or to call for public parks, Volksgarten. But it was only in 1814 when the local government of Birkenhead, a sub of Liverpool, proposed the idea of establishing a municipal park at public expenses. In Germany, the garden architect Leberich Micke was one of the strongest promoters of public parks in early 20th century. In 1910, Micke designed the Wacholder Park in Fulsbüttel in Hamburg. Three years later, in 1913, he created the Slovanske Namesti in Brno. I'm delighted to introduce Stenik Sendler and Julia Borikova. <laughs> they are both from the studio Sendler and Radko Kvet, uh, an architect. And uh, the two offices were responsible for the restoration of this park, which uh, took place in 2006. Um, Stenik Sendler is one of the most uh, distinctive Czech landscape architects. He started as a garden apprentice in Ratrat, sorry for my pronunciation of, this, um, of the Czech verbs, and later he graduated from the College of Horticulture in Brno. In 1982, he studied landscape gardening at the University of Agriculture in Letnicina Moravce. Stenik Sandler set up his own studio on garden and landscape architecture in Brunner in 1990. Since then, the Sandler Studio has been working on a wide range of projects, from small residential gardens, children's playgrounds, urban parks and historical castle gardens to landscaping schemes. The studio often cooperates with architects, what we see in this project as well, engineering professions, artists and other designers. Notable Projects carried out by the studio include Dennis Gardens in Brno in 2005, Komenskeho Park in Slin in 2015, and Jirashek Gardens in Litomerice in uh, 2015. Recently, the studio won the second prize for a competition on the forecourt of the House of Arts and the Park College in Brno. And uh, Mr. Sandler is also teaching at the Faculty of Horticulture at Mandel University. In Bruno, I will. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, <Very expensive thing>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bor Julia Borikova is a landscape architect 
and working at Studio Sand, and she will help with the translation today. Um, Radko Kvet, credited from the Faculty of Architecture at the University of Technology in Brno. He opened an office in 1991, an architectural studio. His studio deals with a wide range of design projects from public housing buildings uh, and det detached houses to small architectural designs for parks and public spaces. He has also worked on several reconstructions. One of the most significant is the reconstruction of the Spielberg Castle in Brno in 2008. Uh, the two offices, uh, so Sandler Office and Radko Kvet, have been cooperating on several park and garden projects. Uh, to name some, the revitalization of the monastery gardens in Litomyshl, sorry, <laughs> uh, the revitalization of the National Heritage Bosena Nemchkova Park, and the Chateau Garden in Lutschitsch. Um, now, Mr. Sandler, Mrs. Uh, Bobrikova, and Mr. Kvet, please, the floor is yours. Okay. <laughs> That's very uncomfortable for me, but all right. Uh, right, for, so for the start, I think uh, the two studios that you have heard about were founded by these two friends, which is the most important part, that they have founded uh, the studios on friendship and have been lifelong friends. And in the studio uh, works a variety of people who are accompanying us today, right there in the back, because we made it <laughs> into a field trip <laughs> to Vienna. <laughs> So they will judge me harshly about uh, what I'm going to say because many of them were also part of the design of uh, this park. And if you could start the presentation, that would be great. Right, so here, uh, I'm sorry, I'm really a uh, nervous presenter, so I will just move around a lot. <laughs> so here for the context, it's uh, of course Wien, where we are now, and uh, Brno, about uh, two hours by the car. This is the whole area uh, of Brno with its uh, historic center and with the park in uh, quarter Kralvapole. Here you have uh, the whole quarter Kralo Pole and the super small park up there. And, and in here you see the very important context uh, of the square in the, in the whole quarter Kralo Pole. So Kralo Pole is, uh, is uh, Ještě, 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 pojďš na ty historický... Jdeš do sadu. <laughs> Dobrý. So, Kralov Pole uh, was not um, always part of Brno. It was a self-standing village or an, and a city later on. Uh, and it expanded in 18th, 19th century and created all these amazing plans how to build the city uh, into a living quarter. So it's not just for housing, but it's full of life, much like the Zestadt we have uh, that we have uh, we have visited uh, before in in the morning. It was founded with many parks and with um, with all the uh, shops on the streets and so on. So here uh, you see the previous plan and where the and where the park fitted into the new built uh, quarter. So they have decided instead of just building one street that was coming from the main street and could have just been lined with the trees, they have decided to make it, uh, to make the gap wider and al allow for a whole public space between the houses, which is really important. And then comes 
uh, comes the architect Leberecht Mige, who was asked to design this open space between the houses. And I'll just circle back to his persona for a moment because I think it's really, it's mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's really important to understand what kind of person he was to understand the, the park. I think that uh, in my words of today's vocabulary, I would call him sort of an environmental activist. He was a person who uh, started with uh, designing private gardens, but then moved into a social sphere of public parks and started to be concerned with uh, social issues. And uh, in 1913, he was asked to design the Slovanske Namjeski, but then of course the war came and the project was a bit stopped. And in 1919, he published the Green Manifesto, which uh, is a sort of call for a good life that is connected with landscape architecture and with the gardens and with life outside. And he is most famous for, for uh, designing sort of social housing with, uh, with gardens that are filled with plants that are edible. So uh, for, um, he, he promotes the idea that people should be able to grow their own food in the garden and they should have the access to their own garden. But then, on the other hand, he also pr promotes the idea of the space where people can gather and they can play freely and the space is for everyone and is accessible for everyone and everyone is equal in the space. So uh, that's, he is an amazing person and I, I just adore him so much. <laughs> and uh, so these ideas he brings, he brings into this newly founding quarter of Kralovo Pole. No? <laughs> Okay, so this is his design from 1913. He was 32 years old when he designed this park, which is amazingly young. <laughs> uh, and uh, he designed this space to be, as I said, open for play. So here you s in the design you see the groups of playing children, which is very central to his idea of space. Uh, so he made a very simple proposal to uh, the the whole square is a bit elevated in this uh, in this direction. So he made it into uh, sort of two layers. The the lower layer that was supposed to be just a grass open grass field uh, that invites you to to play, and the uh, the upper layer where you have a bit uh, more of uh, some some program on trees. Uh, so this is this is the very simple original design that one might call empty, but it was not because he was lacking in imagination or because he was he didn't have time for the design or because uh, there were no money for the design or something like that. It was because he was calling people to play freely and. That's, that's an important point that I will uh, circle back to later, so we try to remember that. <laughs> so the, uh, the, the space was built uh, after the original design uh, in about 1920. In 1920, he was in use. He was in use uh, in, in the original design. And uh, for a couple of years, it worked like the Miguel designed it. There are some historical photos or drawings fr from the time that the space was still, uh, as he designed it, as you can see the, the open grass field in, uh, d down on the, uh, on the down layer. There were the, in the space it was supposed to, mm, it was supposed to be uh, an open field to accom uh, accommodate uh, a lot of activities. As you can see, there's some, uh, the translation is, uh, uh, a public, uh, <laughs> public, uh, 
exhibition of uh, some sort of army uh, gathering. <laughs> so. Okay, and then uh, here is the point that is still very valid today. Uh, discussion about uh, the original design that is very simple was always ongoing in the lines of um, whether the space is not uh, uh, too empty. And it, that is also the discussion that is still going on today. Uh, so only mere 10 years after the design was built, uh, another architect, Josef Kumpan, which I've learned today was Miguel's friend, <laughs> uh, came with some uh, came with some uh, additions to the space that were more to the taste of uh, the society that was that was part of the park in 1920s. I think it's important to acknowledge that Miguel was. He was a modernist with modernist ideas, but he was one of the first ones in Brno. And of course, later on, new ones followed him, like uh, the most famous uh, Mies van der Rohe, who uh, built Villa Tugendat in modernist style with an, with an open garden, but also others like Ernst Wiesner, who is very famous for his pure architectural designs. And they, but they followed Miguel. So he, they, they first saw this uh, this very modernist park, and were perhaps even able to learn something uh, from it for their own designs. But the society as a whole were, was not exactly ready for uh, for his open idea. So they called for new additions to the park, uh, a layer of additions that were that was more in line with the uh, with the taste of the time. So uh, things to look at when uh, you promenade. So uh, new layer was added with flowers and palm trees and and things that uh, were typical for uh, for the parks in in that time. So in 1930, the park was changed uh, to embody the, the spirit of the time. And as you can see, the open space in the, in the um, downwards layer was uh, filled with all sorts of things. And uh, so th the space was changed several times afterwards and then in the 50s, as you well know, uh, the so communist era of Czech Republic came and the space was further changed because, because uh, the park was divided by uh, a road uh, where buses would, uh, would uh, drive and it was uh, in the middle of the downwards layer in here. The previous uh, alley trees were cut down and uh, a road was built in here in the park. This is a picture from 1995 where you can see that uh, the road was already closed but you can see the uh, sort of the, th that the trees were newly planted, the, uh, the new ones in here and there are some remains visible from, from the road. And so this is how the space was in 2003. It was, uh, this, is, this is some time before the architectural competition uh, was called for. And the sp so the space was filled with uh, multiple additions. Uh, the most of the uh, surfaces were made from asphalt because it was uh, easiest for maintenance. My daughter. That's, <laughs> yes, Rish's daughter, <laughs> who is 19 now. <laughs> Go on, please. Go on. <laughs> yes, so, uh, 
And then in the, I think, uh, 2004 or five, the, uh, the architectural, uh, architectural convention <laughs> was called for. And uh, Sandlers and Kviet Studio uh, was one of the teams that uh, wrote a proposal. And, and the proposal looked back on the previous the first uh, design for this space and saw the genius of Lebrecht Mige in his open ideas and decided to uh, bring it back to the original state or to honor the, the previous proposal from Lebrecht Mige. So uh, the proposal works again with two layers, the open space on, uh, in the downwards layer and somewhat more filled space in the upper layer. Best visible maybe on the XNM3. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, so what the proposal uh, kept from the previous state was this uh, alley of uh, cut, cut it trees that are regularly cut it and they create this sort of bosket uh, space and uh, then this then they they sort of reenacted this open uh, grass field uh, in the downwards layer and in the upper layer the proposal works with uh, a playground and the trees that were pre-existing in the in the site and brings into the into the space that is dividing the layers it brings uh, a new element uh, an amphitheater amphitheater <laughs> i'm not sure if that's the right word but the sitting stairs uh, and a new cafe that brings a social context in, uh, into the area uh, I think the proposal also further works with Leberecht's uh, idea of accessibility uh, and it incorporates uh, ramps or like, uh, so yeah, so it's accessible for the, for the, for wheelchairs and uh, little trolleys for children. Um, So maybe what is important in here uh, is uh, the jury from the competition. Uh, one of the jury members from the comp competition was uh, Ivar Otruba, who is a very influential uh, persona of uh, landscape architecture in Brunn. He unfortunately died, I think, last year. Uh, but he 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 was he, he, he's sort of like a always present persona in Brno. And so he was in the jury. And as I said that you should remember the, the ongoing discussion about this space, whether it should be filled with some other things. Um, when the, when the uh, competition was already decided, uh, one environmental group uh, decided to uh, decided to protest the result and uh, they came up with their own idea about how the space should incorporate fonts or something else, uh, so some more environmentally friendly elements. Um, and it was a whole shabang. And uh, in this time in 2006, the juries of competitions were still very present uh, afterwards, after the competition. And Ivar Otruba um, very strictly said that uh, the proposal from Lebrecht Mige is the right choice and no environmental uh, it shouldn't be degraded by just by uh, just an, an environmental view alone. So uh, the 
proposals you can see it now was starting to be built in 2006, I think, or 2005, maybe, you can go on, you can go on. And I think uh, some pictures follow from the construction. Uh, and here, unfortunately, I can't tell you all the funny stories that Danny would tell you because I wasn't there. <laughs> But uh, as you can see, it was a very difficult construction. It was uh, because there, there is a difficult terrain. Uh, the construction was quite expensive for the time. Uh, and what is maybe interesting is that the central uh, green lawn, uh, there was no, th there wasn't money in the budget to uh, made it from the grass carpets. Uh, so it was sewn as the first thing that was done in the in the space. You can go on, you can go on, go on, go on. So as you can see here, the the construction is ongoing uh, in the outer areas, but the the, fir the the lawn in the middle is already uh, green and growing. That is quite unusual for uh, park constructions where the grass would be sewn as the last thing in the park. So, this construction was of course difficult in the terrain. Yeah, the ramps, you can see the grass is already very green while the, uh, the stairs are not done yet. This is this was one of the um, the the picture before was one of the most expensive uh, playgrounds in Brno by the time. <laughs> and uh, here is uh, is an interesting maintenance fact: the mm, the path that was uh, that is dividing the green uh, grass in the downwards layer. Uh, is supposed to be this uh, stone pavement with grass, uh, and it was so for the first, I think, three years uh, after the site was constructed. But uh, later, due to the maintenance, it is uh, it became like a normal stone path, and it's now visible uh, in the in the view. But it was supposed to be uh, sort of grown in and invisible, and it was. And uh, so, as I said, uh, the founding ground of the two studios is friendship. Go back. <laughs> uh, when the park was opened, they had a, this fun little uh, idea about light and about colors uh, and tried out different lightings as, uh, as a field trip in Brno. <laughs> It's um, it's to honor Louis Baragan. <laughs> right. So in the uh, here you can see that uh, later on this will be a cafe, but in the first the cafe was not built and the park was open without it and it worked like a sort of uh, just a shading area. And. The cafe was built in, uh, I think, after f about five years after the first uh, opening of the park. The 
the most important part of the park uh, always were and are people who play in the space. So right now the park, I think, works uh, as Slabrach Mige would want it. You can see the people playing on the grass and you can see it's accessible for everyone and people are equal in the space, uh, which was his founding idea. And of course the park uh, always needs renewals and reconstructions that are in accordance with the time. Uh, so right now we are working on a renewal of the playground in the upper layer of the park and uh, for the future it was always planned for these blue walls uh, to be filled with graffiti um, because there are two schools present uh, in the uh, outside of the park there's a, there is a gymnasium and uh, I think like a basic ground school and uh, so, so these walls should be filled with uh, graffiti themed, uh, themed for, for the schools. And now, right now, that's, that's also, that's of course a controversial topic because this site uh, is a national or her heritage site, cultural or heritage site, not, not national uh, heritage site, but um, so anything you want to do in the park, you have to uh, ask for permission from the Heritage Bureau. And as much, they are, uh, as, much as they are very accommodating now, it wasn't always so. So there were discussions about these blue walls. Uh, so Zdenek had to tell them that they resemble the sky and they were like, okay, then it's okay. <laughs> and then he told them that uh, he wants them filled with graffiti and they were like, you are crazy. Uh, so he said that they will be green with, uh, with plants, which uh, then didn't happen. Uh, and now after the, I think 15 years, the park is open, they are a little bit open to the topic of graffiti. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> But again, it's, I think the, the, but that's just my personal opinion, but the, I think the graffiti is a, a very fitting theme, again, for Ladbrak Mige, who would, I think, like to incorporate uh, the children and the free play of, of colors and shapes. So I think he would bless that. <laughs> That's the cafe, as I said, it was built uh, a bit after the park was built and opened, and now works. Again, the life of the park and the people is what's important in the space. The, the open space invites people for uh, different types of events which are happening in the space. As you can see concerts, and later on we'll show some videos. So the open space is amazing that because you can fill it with whatever you want and people can enjoy it. So uh, here you can see the proposal from, from Leberach Miga from 1913 and the competition proposal from Zdenik and Radko uh, and other people. <laughs> and you can see how they honored the, uh, the, the, the previous proposal and how it, was, how it turned out and how it looks today. videos from the events that are happening in the space. It's 
Chtějí promítnout ještě to, tu naši práci, jako to, 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 to promítní. To promítní, ne? Nebo Já bych to pustil teďka, ať se můžou ptat potom. Tak teď pustíme videa o Slovaniáku. Tak tedy Ocean, Výkop, anebo Gymnázium. celebrate 100 years of uh, founding of the Republic of Czechoslovakia, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> But I think that's the why you see the Czech flag <laughs> on the stairs. Yeah, and so as you can see, as the camera zooms out, it shows the space as it's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I visited this gymnasium. I started in '74, and I started smoke in this year, in 16 year. This isn't even from uh, uh, celebration of the sea, is the correct translation, but it's a, it's a sort of uh, event where you can taste fish. Okay, so what my colleague is uh, whispering to my ear is that uh, the, the lawn on the, um, down there is, um, is under, um, uh, It's watered constantly, so it can withstand the uh, the people walking on the grass for a short period of time, like this. It doesn't destroy the lawn. <laughs> okay, and then in the end, I think, uh, so we'll show just a uh, couple of the works. Uh, that Ulrike was uh, describing before. Yeah, we uh, agree, I would think, uh, we start with uh, some question on the par, and then if there is some interest in time, we can have a look at the other project of the okay. studio. Okay, can I take it on yeah. out here? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Julia, for this inspiring uh, presentation. Uh, and I'm sure you have a lot of questions uh, to the group, to the team. But uh, may I start with a short <laughs> question uh, concerning the, related to the uh, starting point of this uh, park design, to Leberecht Mige, uh, as he was, uh, most of his uh, projects were in uh, Germany, and there's only several, very few projects known abroad from Germany, um, and like he, Lieberecht uh, Miki um, spent, or gave uh, several lectures in Vienna in the 19, early 1920s, but there was no project realized or not even envisioned uh, in Vienna. So my question, 
do you know uh, why uh, it came that Liberecht Mickey designed this park and did you do some research on these connections? Dvě varianty. První varianta je, že se znal s Josefem Kumpánem a Josef Kumpán v Hamburgu u něho nějakou dobu působil a pozval ho. A druhá varianta brněnská, že tam měl hezkou ženskou v tom Brně, takže za ňou jezdil a tudíž jako zvolil, zvolil Brno před Vídní. Řekni to přesně. <laughs> Okay, so there are two hypotheses to <laughs> answer this question. The first one uh, is that he knew Josef Kumpan, um, who was uh, uh, an architect from Prague, and he invited him um, to, to work at this project. And the second hypothesis is that he had a lover in uh, Brun, and in Brno, and uh, she invited him to cooperate on this project. <laughs> Just very briefly, I, I was, uh, you, you mentioned that there was a discussion about in environmental issues about the competition uh, entry. Uh, what was it about? Was the, what, what, were, what was the, the critics uh, on, on, the, on the entry? And that's the first. And I suppose that it might have deal with the existing trees. And this would be... Uh, the following up question, uh, how did you deal with the existing trees? I, I think you, uh, you took the existing uh, alleys mm -hmm. and integrated it. Um, yeah, what, what kind of techniques uh, were, were there uh, to, to be in, um, uh? used? <laughs> used. <laughs> 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 Jakože, uh, jo, já jsem říkala o tom, že uh, když byla ta soutěž, tak Veronika měla problém s tím, že, mm -hmm. uh, že vstoupili prostě do toho uh, soutěžního post-dialogu a měli problém s tím, že tady ten návrh není dostatečně environmentální a co, bylo, co byly teda jejich přesně jako body, co kritizovali tady, ta, tady na tom místě? Jaké to byly kromě? Oh, těžko, těžko říct, jako. <laughs> Byl to, byl to takový trend, kdy oni napadali všechno, úplně všechno. To znamená, že oni v podstatě tam ten jeden člověk tam protestoval proti úplně jinému projektu a teprve po hodině zjistil, že není na Kerpur Brno, ale že na slovanském náměstí Brno. A byl tam takový konflikt mezi, jestli jako jít nějakým trendem absolutně přírodního parku, anebo jestli jít trendem nějaké památkové péče, památkové ochrany, památ nějakého historického sdělení a současného využití. Jo? A argumentovali tím, že hnízdění ptactva, to prostě... No, a my jo, no, byl to, byl to trend, prostě jejich trend, jo, jako nikdo to nechápal moc, ale byli velice rychle umravněni, asi za tři měsíce. OK, so to answer the first question, the environmental problems that were on the, on the space. Um, so it was a trend uh, in those years for the environmental groups to, um, 
to get into the discussion of the proposals, but it, was, it wasn't so clear what the demands were. Uh, so what they were saying is that they sent two young kids to uh, do the discussion, but they weren't very clear on their demands. And I remember that uh, the main demand was uh, that uh, the sort of ornithologist view uh, of the topic, that there are uh, birds nesting in the existing uh, trees and, and existing shrubs. But uh, this was then, uh, th the, um, uh, there was an ornithologist, um, uh, No ten, víš co, ještě ten protest napsal jeden ornitolog a 20 ochránců to podepsalo, jo, yep. takže... So they, they had to make the, I don't know how to, how to call that, like the, when an ornithologist comes and inspects the area and he found out that those claims are uh, not valid and most of the uh, birds nest in the surrounding uh, areas of, of green areas between the buildings uh, and On, on the site, there were mostly uh, 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 trees and shrubs that are not indigenous uh, in the space, so they, they were not very much connected to the, to the birds that are indigenous. Uh, and the, the other fun story that you was telling me is that uh, when the discussion with the environmental <laughs> uh, people was open, there were two teams. One of them was the one that was, uh, that was following up on the ornithologist case, and the other one is, uh, found out after one hour of protesting that he is not uh, in the right meeting, and he is uh, supposed to be protesting a building of Carrefour uh, somewhere else. <laughs> okay. Uh, Takže bylo maximální snaha byla ty stávající kvalitní stromy zachovat. Lipovou ale jsme mírně vyvětvili, protože byla asi ve dvou metrech byly větve prostě a bylo to neprůchodný nebo nekomfortně průchodný, takže se to zvýšilo na 2,5 až 3 metry. A ty čtyři původní jírovce, co byly nahoře, tak jsme je nechali, i když jsme věděli, že jsou v katastrofickém stavu a že jsou nebezpeční, právě proto, aby jsme nenahráli té Veronice a těm ochráncům přírody a vyměnili se ze školky v postupy mi od Štefana Lorberga, se vzali čtyři krásné stromy a když zjistil, že to je na Slovany Šoplac, Imbrin, tak, tak je dal za poloviční cenu. A jinak se ty stromy zachovaly maximálně všechny, co tam byly. Ale ta, ta je původní, ta tam je jako uh, regenerována, jako ta lipová, ten pongon je regenerovaný. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for the question about the trees, so the alley, as you said, it's Linden alley, and uh, those had to be uh, a bit uh, branched up, <laughs> so they had to cut a, a few branches because, uh, because the, the branches were... Um, in the industry too much and was uh, the people were not able to walk there comfortably uh, but other than that the alley was not touched and uh, it survived perfectly um, and the other trees in the area uh, most prominent ones were the ice school trees uh, in the upper layer and those were in a very bad shape uh, before the start of the construction uh, and they Um, if they would follow the right procedure, they would have to be cut down uh, in the construction. But that would uh, that would play into the cards of the environmental groups. So they had to leave them there uh, for a couple more years after the construction, even though it was dangerous for the playground. Uh, and then later on, they changed them for. Uh, the trees that are there today, and it was from the Lorberg um, tree nursery, and uh, when he found out it's for the Slovanischer Platz, uh, he gave those trees for half the price. <laughs>
Can I ask a question? Uh, I, th I think it's very interesting, uh, Stenik, that you said it's, or, or you also, you call it Platz, because Miguel himself also called it a Platz, uh, which means a square rather than a park. So that would also support the, uh, the issue of uh, make it more usable than, and, and perhaps less uh, vegetation. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I, I wanted to, uh, referred to was the heritage question because uh, one question I have is since when is it under protection and how did and how did this protection or, uh, enter into the into the brief for the competition mm -hmm. so uh, it's under protection from 1994 uh, also the year when I was born. <laughs> and uh so Když jsme tam měli ještě takový, neměli jsme problém, měli jsme jeden menší problém, že když jsme tam navrhovali ty zdi, které jsme věděli, že budou jako, že bychom chtěli, aby byli nějaký street art, nebo aby tam bylo něco výtvarně zpracovaného, tak v těch vizualizacích, které šly na památkový ústav, tak byly mírně zarostlý přísavníkem a vystárí a nebyly tak vidět. Jo? Takže trošku jsme malinko zálhali, ale potom se to nějak... Jako... Já myslím, já myslím, to... My jsme v té době moc jako se... Když to řeknu, jako na hmm. že se, že se s nimi moc nepárali. Vys teda potom ukážeme litomysl, to, to prostě my jsme se s nima, to byla Ale... trošku jináčí doba a, a samozřejmě byl tam respekt, respekt tam určitě byl, ale jako s těmi památkami se těžko, těžko jednalo, tam jako ne, není úplně tolik kvalifikovaných lidí. A aby... to neříkej, prostě. No. <laughs> Uh, já si myslím, že ta otázka směřovala k tomu, jak to vstupilo do toho zadání té soutěže. Jestli tam bylo jako, že jestli máte uh, se vrátit k tomu Miguel, ne, ne, prostě, ne. jestli jak tam figuroval on. Soutěž byla volná a uh, Miguel jsme objevili v podstatě my a my jsme uh, se k němu chtěli vrátit na rozdíl od těch ostatních soutěžících. Jsme to na něm postavili v podstatě na té jednoduchosti a na takové té jako přímočarosti a na takovém tom sociálním způsobu užívání toho parku. Ostatní, měli, ty ostatní návrhy byly daleko romantičtější a daleko jako možná soudobější na tehdejší dobu a my jsme ten park jako vyčistili s odkazem na Mígeho a to tu porotu jako zaujalo nějak. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the strong prescri prescription to get back to the previous uh, proposal from Miguel. Uh, so uh, I think the important word that Radko was saying was respect. And uh, so the team discovered Miguel's pre uh, proposal, original proposal by themselves in the preparation for the, for the competition and felt a great respect towards the proposal and uh, they have based their design on this proposal, uh, on Miguel's proposal and that's what won them the competition, that they uh, were different than the other teams, the other teams uh, uh, sort of view the space more, in, more romantic and more in line with uh, what was already there. Okay, uh, my question would be, uh, did you um, deal with the additional designs afterwards, starting in the 1930s, and access them in terms of heritage values? How did you do this? The second one would be, did you do some comparative analysis uh, to find the position of the Brunner layout uh, within Nick's work? 
in Germany. Forget the first question no, because I no, <laughs> focus I on the second. The one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first, you know, historic gardens are multi layered aged grounds. How did you deal with the additional <laughs> designs? Starting? Okay. I, I don't talk about the street, no, yeah. but about the additions in the 1930s mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. how, did, how did you access them okay. in your decision? <laughs> že vlastně jako by ten návrh byl původně jako by Migeho z těch uh, 1913 no. a tak, ale zároveň uh, pak v těch 30. letech uh, se na to navrstvily další vrstvy, které jsou ale dnes už taky historické. Jak jste hmm. přistoupili k tomu, že vlastně ten uh, prostor se historicky měnil a jak jste si vybrali to, že vlastně ten, že se vracíte jako kdyby tomu Migeho návrhu, jak jste se postavili k tomu kumpánu, k těm hmm. kumpánovým jako by hmm. předělávkám no. Za těch sto let, jako, nebo po těch sto letech, nám připadal ten Míge daleko aktuálnější a daleko soudobější než ten, než ten Josef Kumpán, který prostě nám do dnešní podoby užívání toho parku vůbec nezapadal a naopak nám zapadal jako absolutně dokonale ten Míge v té své jednoduchosti, v, tom, jako v té nabídce toho veřejného volného prostoru. Takže jednoznačně návrat k Migemu a vynulování kumpána. Hmm. Já, by, já bych ještě k tomu e, dodal, že máme připravených ještě ta pár věcí a na, na těch, na těch <laughs> se, se ukáže přesně tady náš přístup k, e, vlastně k památkově péči, že samozřejmě respekt, maximální respekt k principu k historické stopě ale v podstatě žijeme o 100 let později, společnost se stoprocentně změnila a po nás se říká všechno pro lidi, takže to je úplně, úplně něco jiného. A, a existují tisíc dalších předpisů, rám pro imobilní a já nevím co, záchodku a tak dále. Takže ten respekt se musí někam jako posunout. Zároveň je tam historické nazírání, takže my se s tím moc nepářeme zase. Počkej, no. ještě taková drobnost, jako v tom roce 1913, kdy Mige, vlastně kdy ten park začal vznikat, tak třeba Mies van den Rohe chodil na školu. To říkala dobře, no tak jo. <laughs> okay, so, um, when they uh, viewed the, the previous proposal from Mige and then the, they, the, the, the new layers from Kumpan and they, uh, they sort of uh, compared those new additions. They found out uh, that uh, they think that uh, Mige's proposal is more contemporary and more fitting for the people today and how they use the space. So the additions from Josef Kumpan uh, were sort of romantic and uh, they uh, enabled people to promenade uh, on between certain flowery shrubs, <laughs> but uh, that's not how people in their view wanted to use uh, the space today. So they wanted to create this, uh, this open space that Miga envisioned before and therefore uh, just put uh, the new additions uh, to the site. Uh, yes, and... Um, yep. Já bych to rád na demonstroval na, na Lito myšli. Tam uh, je přesně. And if přesně. we could maybe now show uh, some Ale. other examples of the uh, work from historical sites, uh, they will uh, comment it on on comment on the approach to the historical sites on those. Na na Kumpanovi na Kumpanovi upravě se nedal hrát mm. fotbal. <laughs> 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 Víš co, pustou od začátku, pustou od začátku. Tak to je takhle to vidíte? Jo, jo. Katedrál? Ale katedrál není, ale historický park. Co? Katedrál není, ale jakoby to nenavazuje na to, co jste říkali. Lidem išlo, ne? Ne, pust celý a pust se k tomu vrátíme. Ale to je strašně dlouhý. Ale není to dlouhý, to je 10, 5 minut. Ne, to je to nechají to, to je 
Okay. So this, these are the monastery gardens in Litomyshl. Uh, and that's, that's a very historical site. It's, a, it's a, where, where previously were uh, monastery gardens and there's, a, yeah, so old monastery. <laughs> No, potom. My pustíme to a potom. To už je, to už je nová. No, takže na, na tomto. My jsme respektovali stoprocentně všechny historické hranice. Zjistili jsme si všechno o historii a transformovali jsme to celkem uh, jako do soudobího jazyka. Trošku jsme zapomněli to prodiskutovat s památkáři. Vyšel dvoustránkový článek v novinách, jak jsme zničili celý park. Potom jsme dostali dvě ceny někde v Paříži a v, v, na, v Dortmund nebo v Německu někde, a v Norimberku. Norimberku. A, a posléze to bylo přijato teda celou českou odbornou veřejností, ale byla to v začátku velká tragédie. So uh, this this renovation in in the renovation they approached it so that they respected all the historical uh, like lines that were present in the space, uh, but they translated the whole uh, area uh, to fit the contemporary architectural language, uh, and after the space was built the. The whole architectural community produced some uh, uh, in, in the papers. There was an article how they destroyed the monastery gardens, and later on they got some uh, awards in Paris, I think, and in Germany somewhere. And after they got the awards for uh, for the space, the Czech architectural community also accepted that they maybe didn't destroy the monastery gardens. Um, I, 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 I do have a question related to this point. Uh, in the description of these pro projects, uh, this is always named like um, uh, revitalization, renovation, uh, but how do they consider their work? Is it not more like a new interpretation uh, what of what you find there of the historic concept? Uh, popisuje slovanský náměstí, tak to, ten, ten váš návrh se popisuje jako renovace nebo revitalizace a o, zároveň i jak vidíte vaši práci ví, jestli revitalizujete prostory, nebo je interpretujete, nebo jak byste to nazval? To je hodně filozofická otázka. To je filozofická otázka. To, snažíme se to transformovat do dnešní doby tak, aby, aby to bylo aby se lidi tam mohli zhromažďovat, aby to bylo pěkný, aby to bylo udržitelný, aby to bylo jednoduchý. No, ne, těžko říct. Zden, zden řekni, co? I think, I think uh, what Rafko is trying to say uh, is uh, <laughs> translation into a contemporary language. Aby se nám to líbilo. Aby se nám to líbilo. <laughs> a ty to akuš. <laughs> co? So until we find another question, maybe we can go over the other works that uh, um, they would like to present. Oh, how much is it? Five minutes. Yeah, perfect. Maybe, ma yeah, five one, minutes. Maybe um, ten. Max two hours. This is the um, cathedral <laughs> in Brno. I think it's a. Společná práce. Okay. I think it's the sort of like the first uh, huge project in Brno. To je asi pět procent naší práce ta společná práce. About 5% of the, uh, their work is, the, is what you can see in here. This is Lanova Park in Prague. <laughs> uh, Lanova Park in Prague is, uh, is, is a park that is in the historical part of Prague and it's been rebuilt as a very colorful 
uh, playground that is going to be redesigned uh, maybe next year. <laughs> And maybe if we go back. What I like about Lanova is that it really, as you can see from the pictures, from the one below, well before, you can see this very modern part of the park. And then later on, when you uh, go further in, uh, in the park, you can see this very sort of almost like classic or romantic part of the park later on. Oh, with roses. So they sort of put together the contemporary and the historical parts of, uh, of the space. What they bring in, into, the, into the spaces are uh, the facilities or the, the yes, so toilets and uh, coffee places, which is an essential part, uh, essential part of a park day. Uh, and maybe it wasn't in, in history. It's also, again, a contemporary translation. This is <laughs> Park in Carvina. Again, as you can see, it's, uh, lots of the work is set in some historical context, but it's not limiting for the work. It's uh, how you compare the historical concept, uh, co context with, uh, with the contemporary art architectural shapes, or at least that's how I see their work. the space after it's revitalized <laughs> it it's always supposed to invite people that's the most important part of their design it should be usable and accessible and fun for people Okay, thank you very much uh, to all of you, to the whole team, for, the, to, uh, for this insight in your project, which is very inspiring, great. Thank you very much. Well, uh, thank you, Ulrike, also. <laughs> uh, I would just like to uh, announce the next two lectures. One is on the 18th of January and one is on the 25th. Uh, on the 18th we will have a presentation by, a, uh, by Christian Stern, who is a Swiss landscape architect who designed the Irchel Park in Zurich, uh, which is uh, probably closer to what the environmentalists uh, asked you to do. Uh, than uh, Miguel's park, but it's, it has uh, several ideas which uh, come back as well. Uh, so, and then one week later, on the 25th, we will have a presentation by, uh, by, um, no, it's gibt jetzt nicht, <laughs> by Laura Jeschke, uh, on uh, her research on uh, Berlin Gleisdreieck Park. Uh, she did a research about the process and the and the use and the maintenance of the park, which is an aspect which is com becoming more Im important in contemporary park design, I would guess. So thanks you, thank you again very much, also Julia, for your big effort. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we can have some uh, discussion, I think, with a glass of beer. Your beer is empty, so uh, it's time anyway. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. <laughs>
Děkuji za pozvání.